Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of News Generation. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. I'll be doing this episode with Akesi Moke, but before we meet her, let me tell you what is coming up. Water shortage hits some parts of Accra, making for a difficult situation. As the meningitis outbreak in the country spreads, some of you tell us what the Ghana Health Service should be doing to increase awareness and how children in the eastern region risk their lives for gold. All coming up now, please stay with us. News Generation, supported by Cowbell with Vitamin. We all know how important good nutrition is to grow up big and strong. Not only is Cowbell milk enriched with 28 vitamins and minerals, it's also boosted by the five most important vitamins, which we call Vitamin. It's got vitamin A for good eyesight development. It's got vitamin C to help fight infections. It's got vitamin D and calcium to help build strong bones and teeth. It's got vitamin E to help with body protection. And it's got vitamin K for general well-being and immunity. For good health and vitality, only Cowbell with Vitaridge puts you on the fast track. Thanks for staying. Now, there's always a chance for you to get interactive with us on the show. Akesi Moke is going to tell you how exactly you can do that. Hello, Akesi. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? I'm good. How's your week been? Very tiring and fun. You know, a hybrid of both. A hybrid of both. But I bet you're excited to be here, aren't you? I am. All right, great. So let the people out there know where they can reach us on social media. You can get interactive with us on our social media handles at Facebook on facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh and on Twitter at newsgenerationgh. All right, and on to our first story. And some parts of Accra have been without pipe-borne water for about two weeks. The shortage has caused a lot of dif difficulty for those affected. People living in Dansuman, Latebi Okoshi, Adabraka and Kokumlimli in the western part of Accra have been without water and are relying on other sources for water. The situation is especially difficult as the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission announced a 67.2% increase in tariffs only a month ago. Everyone in the affected areas has been hit by the water shortage. It's affecting us very well because as a student, and I'm informed to have to wake up and come to school. But because of the water crisis, wake up more earlier, go to fetch water and come back. And then even you can't do some of the house chores because the water is not enough. It does affect me. But because of the weather, when you come late, they don't even notice you are late. It's really affecting me because if I wake up in the morning, I don't get water to bath, so I have to go outside and, and look for water. So it makes me come to school really late. And sometimes I wake up really early in the morning, so if I come to school, I'm sleeping, kind of sleepy. So I think it should, they should open the taps for us. It's not affecting me because we have a lot of poly tanks in our house. But I think for other people, it's affecting them as school children. So when we are coming to school, and you have to go and fetch water to come and bath before you go to school. And also for those who sell the food, it's affecting them very much. The Ghana Water Company says it has had unstable power supply to produce enough water to serve the affected area. Until water supply is restored, residents in affected communities will have to rely on other sources which may not be so safe for their health. About 52 students of Bekwai SDA Senior High School in the Ashanti region have been displaced after a fire gutted the school's boys' dormitory. Correspondent Isaac Nomanu reports the fire started around 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday at the Ameyao Boys' Dormitory. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Bekwai District Commander of the Ghana National Fire Service, Mr. Amos Aban, said the prompt response of the fire service prevented the fire from spreading to other parts of the school. The cause of the fire is not yet known, but it is thought that the blaze must have been caused by illegal connections by the students. 
Now, let's talk about pneumococcal meningitis and cerebrospinal meningitis. They are getting, these two words actually, are getting lots of attention. Cases have been recorded in almost every region, but there's been little awareness created. So, some of you told us what the Ghana Health Service should be doing to create awareness. Here are your views in WhatsApp. I think they should go on social media because now it's like everybody's on social media. So if they create the awareness, they can tell us the causes and how to prevent it on social media so that we can know about it very well. Because now everybody's like everybody's on social media. So I think social media is the best place for them to advertise it. I think that now most mostly everyone is watching TV. So they can create adverts to advertise it on TV for everyone to get the awareness in order to prevent it from killing more people. I think first they should um, advertise it on tellies so that those who don't really know about it will get to know. And sketches and drama so that they would also like get to really know. Ex um, example, the illiterate. Let's say when they make a sketch, the illiterate will know ah, this is what um, they are talking about. I think they should um, do sketches and dramas as the way they did for cholera, so it would educate them more about the sickness. Well, I think they should send health workers to organizations such as schools, churches, and educate them on the prevention of the disease, so it will help minimize the disease. The outbreak. Here are some important things you should know about the disease and how you can prevent it. Today we will discuss meningitis. Let's see what it is. Meningitis occurs globally but is worse in some places than others. This disease is very serious and can kill. However, it can be treated so that people do not die. Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges, which are the covering of the brain and the spinal cord. It is most often caused by bacterial, viral, and fungal infection. This disease is common in children, and it may begin as complication of other diseases, such as measles, mumps, malaria, or even as an ear infection. Community health workers, parents, and carers can all play a role in reducing the number of deaths caused by meningitis. It is important to look for any of the following signs, particularly in infants and children, but remember that meningitis can also affect adults. A high fever is a common symptom and can be accompanied with vomiting, severe headache, and a stiff neck where the child looks very ill and lies with his head and neck bent backwards. In babies less than one year old, the soft spot on the top of the head known as the fontanelle may appear swollen, known as bulging fontanelle. Sometimes a child suffering from meningitis may also experience fits or convulsions. At the late stage of meningitis, a rash may be visible on the child's skin. If you have a glass available, it is possible to do the tumbler test. If the glass is pressed firmly against the rash, it will not fade and will remain visible through the glass. If this happens, you must seek medical advice immediately. But remember, you must also be aware that a rash does not always appear in a sick child or adult. Sometimes early meningitis can be hard to recognize but the child may also cry in a strange way, even when the mother puts the child on her breast for feeding. The child may be unusually sleepy and unresponsive. Often the children get worse and only become quiet when they lose consciousness. In other children and adults, you may notice that they dislike bright lights. Not all of these symptoms will appear. Even if just one symptom appears, you should take the situation very seriously and act as soon as possible. Remember, meningitis can kill. 
treat appearance of any symptom very seriously and seek medical assistance immediately. Please stay safe out there. Now, it's been quite an interesting week in local news. Let's take you through. The Vosa region has recorded its first case of cerebrospinal meningitis, another type of meningitis similar to the pneumococcal meningitis that is spreading across the country. The case was recorded at the Krachi West Hospital and is being carefully monitored by health officials. There are still no vaccines available for either of the two strains of meningitis. Pupils of the Asin Wawa Asi MA Primary and GHS are looking to government to improve their school infrastructure. The school, which is near Asin Fosu in the central region, has children studying under a dilapidated school block and under trees. Some teachers of the school are desperately appealing to government for urgent support. Some final year students of the St. Paul's Senior High School at Denu in the Volta region have been sacked from class. According to them, they were sacked for not paying for vacation classes they did not attend. According to a parent, the teachers at the school are demanding that all the final year students pay for the classes that were organized over the Christmas holidays. A parent is threatening legal action. Meanwhile, the headmaster of the school, Francis Logbe, tells Joy News he is not aware students are being prevented from attending classes. Three-year-old twin brothers died Thursday morning in the fire outbreak at their home in Kintin, a suburb of Techiman. Neighbors say the blaze was sudden and spread too fast. By the time the family had gotten to the boys, they were already gone. Veterinary officers in Ghana have started an indefinite national strike over their salaries. National President of the Association of Veterinary Professionals, Emmanuel Ishan, says members are to stay away from bed flu investigations, vaccine preparations, border controls and meat inspections across the country. We have more stories for you after the break. We all know how important good nutrition is to grow up big and strong. Not only is cowbell milk enriched with 28 vitamins and minerals, it's also boosted by the five most important vitamins, which we call Vita-Rich. It's got vitamin A for good eyesight development. It's got vitamin C to help fight infections. It's got vitamin D and calcium to help build strong bones and teeth. It's got vitamin E to help with body protection. And it's got vitamin K for general well-being and immunity. For good health and vitality, only Cowbell with Vitaridge puts you on the fast track. Welcome back from the break. Now remember you can get interactive with us on our social media handles at Facebook on facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh and on Twitter at newsgengh. Now about two episodes ago, we showed you a little bit of a documentary on children mining in Ekoso in the eastern region. Here's another which shows how children risk their lives and education for gold. Many have died at the many mine sites in this area, particularly sites with pits left uncovered. But these young ones blatantly defy the enormous dangers they are exposed to and do their own kind of mining using old-fashioned equipment. So why are these young ones in the industry? 16-year-old Yusuf has been in the Koli Koli business for over a year and leads a gang of young boys and girls at Ekoso to find gold. Earning an average of 50 Ghana cities a day, he can't resist the temptation of going deep down into the pit for the precious metal. There's really a bad day at the mine site. Today is no exception, as the gang leader together with his team discovers gold dust, what they call black. Hey, 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 hey,
Just look at what we have. We've been digging and washing since morning, but with little to show. It has even demoralized my counterpart. You see, the zeal of digging has even died down. Affecting your studies, I mean, at school. He said, "I'm not going to school. I'm going to school." Yes, the mind sites have negatively affected my academic performance. Since I started here, there has been a dip in my performance. I used to rank shoulders with the best in my class, but now I almost always make the poorest grades in my class. Fifteen-year-old Michael has been attracted into the industry. Like his other colleagues, Michael has been jumping into the pit in recent days in search of gold. He escapes school not less than two times in a week to find gold in the pits. He has the blessing of his mother who watches on as he gathers his equipment on a daily basis to get on with business. Michael has also worked his way through the mill and has earned for himself the accolade of gang leader. At 15, he is already playing the role of a breadwinner. Koli Koli is not the preserve of only the boys. The venture may be dangerous, but that doesn't scare 15-year-old Augustina, the only girl in the group, from frequenting the mine site to help her male counterparts in the pits. Honestly speaking, my academic performance has seen a deep and it's all because I have little time for my books now. I used to come second in my class, but now my performance is nowhere near that. <laughs> I do not entertain any fears here. I know the dangers involved in doing this. 12-year-old Apietu is the latest to join the club. He quit school about two weeks ago. After a couple of attempts at the mine site, Young Apietu is convinced the Koli Koli business pays. On average, I make an amount of 50 Ghana cities. But on a bad day, I make 20 Ghana cities. I give the money I make to my mother and grandmother, who they use to buy food items for the house. Have you saved the proceeds from the mining business? I also keep the rest, and that is what I use to take care of my needs. Who introduced you to the mining business? I was introduced into the Galamse business by my friends. Apieto's decision to quit school for the Koli Koli business may have been inspired by this young man, Ajenim Boateng. The 19-year-old has dropped out of school and is now one of the leaders at the mine site. He dropped out in his final year at the junior high school after a couple of attempts in the pits for the precious metal. That time I'm going to school, I saw my post going to my Galimse work. And when they come to house, they get more money. And I stopped the school to add them to go to Galimse work. At the time now, my, my teacher tell me I should come to school, but I wasn't fear there. Then I was forced to middle school. Now I say, me do my chair for the same my Jessica Clinton. Me call me Jessica, me call me Jessica. Until you do that, ma. Growing up, I had the ambition of becoming a teacher, but the lucrative nature of the Galante business made me drop out of school when I was in GS2.
Kitaka. These young miners are risking everything to extract the precious metal. Let's move on to other stories now. And the United Nations says it has proof European soldiers sexually abuse children in the Central African Republic. The new allegations suggest that a number of girls between 14 and 16 years were raped by peacekeeping troops in the country. Let's have a look. According to the UN, a number of girls aged between 14 and 16 years accused Georgian members of the EU's operation UFO of rape. A seven-year-old girl and a nine-year-old boy also said they were abused by soldiers from France. The troops were sent to stop violence between Christian militia and largely Muslim rebels. The rebels seized power in March 2013. In response, the militia took up weapons to fight them. The abuse is alleged to have taken place close to a camp for displaced people near Bangu Airport in 2014. However, it was only uncovered in recent weeks during interviews with the United Nations team. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Zaid Rad Al Hussein, said he was extremely alarmed at the consistent accusations against peacekeeping troops. In December last year, an independent panel criticized the United Nations' handling of abuse allegations in the Central African Republic. It blamed senior United Nations officials of abusing the authority by failing to take action over allegations of abuse by soldiers from three countries, France, Equatorial Guinea, and Chad. Let's catch up with some more stories in International News Round. Ivory Coast ex-president Laurent Gbagbo has denied charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity as his landmark trial began at the International Criminal Court. The charges relate to the country's civil conflict that erupted after Gbagbo lost elections in 2010. Prosecutors accuse him of orchestrating a campaign of violence. Laurent Gbagbo, 70, and ex-militia leader Charles Blegude, 44, deny murder, rape, attempted murder, and persecution. The UK government has said it will accept more child refugees who have been separated from their families. War in Syria and other countries has forced tens of thousands of people, including lots of children, to leave their homes and look for safety in other countries. It is a difficult journey and some children have been split up from their families on the way and have had to carry on traveling alone. The UK has already promised to take 20,000 refugees from Syria in the next four years but many campaigners and politicians say they should do more. Now it has been decided that some of those unaccompanied children will be invited to start a new life in the UK. Martina Hinges and Sania Meza have won the Australian Open Women's Doubles title to make it three Grand Slams in a row. The top seeds beat Czech pair Andrea Lavakova and Lucy Radeka 7-6-6-3 in the final at Melbourne Park. Switzerland's Hinges and India's Meza, who had already won at Wimbledon and the US Open will be targeting a decisive victory at the French Open. Hinges now has five Australian Open women's doubles titles. She won in 1997, 1998 and 1999 and again in 2002. Hinges, 35, is a former world number one in singles. A professional skier from the U.S. had a lucky escape when she took a big tumble down a mountain in Alaska. Angel Collinson was doing a stunt for a winter sports movie when she hit an icy patch and lost control. A video of her fall has been seen 350,000 times on YouTube and is being used to promote ski safety. Amazingly, she only suffered injuries to two fingers and some bruising. Angel is a professionally trained stunt person. Please do not try this at home. Barbie, the famous toy doll model, is getting three new body types this year. Mattel, the U.S. company who make the toy, is adding tall, curvy, and petite body shapes to its lineup. Different skin tones, eye colors, and hairstyles will also be added, the company said. Many people had complained that the traditional Barbie size was unhealthy 
creating an unrealistic body image for girls. With the new body shapes, the toy makers say they are offering girls choices that are more reflective of the world they see today. A brother and sister in the US have made the most of the snowy weather by building a giant snow model of their favorite Star Wars character. The pair in Massachusetts grabbed shovels and a wheelbarrow to make a massive snow pile and then chiseled it into shape. They used spray paint and some sticks to complete the droid look. The fastest time for a human to solve a Rubik's Cube is 4.9 seconds, but that's positively slow compared to this robot which can do it in a mere 1.019 seconds. The inventors are hoping it's going to go straight into the records books, beating the current world record for a robot of 2.39 seconds. However, they are still waiting for official verification from Guinness World Records. And that's it for this edition of News Generation. Akesi, how has the bulletin been for you? It's been quite fun and very interesting, fun huh? and interesting. Learned some stuff about pneumococcal meningitis and cerebrospinal spinal meningitis. meningitis. And then there's another one, meningococcal meningitis. Yes. Whew. Are you worried at all? I am a little bit. I am because, you know, a lot of people aren't aware of this so they don't know what's happening they don't know that this is very dangerous and stuff so if we create more awareness i'm sure everything will be better yeah so please remember to stay safe remember to wash your hands after everything you do also when you are coughing or you are cover your mouth cover your mouth cover your nose okay and drink lots of fluids it'll help so we wish you a safe week ahead yes. And thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ifo Akwa Harrison. I've been doing this together with At KC Moke. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Bye. News Generation. Supported by Cowbell with Vitamin. <laughs>